You're on the dock with Pastor Troy here. We're on set right now, ready to rock and roll here. We're excited about this day. we got a great podcast series coming up for you, and we're going to tell you about it in a minute, but we just want to remind you that On the Dock has a simple and certain mission. That mission is simply this. It's about conversations, guys, to propel your faith. We're going to help these people listen in, get their faith out of the shadows and into the deep. That's what the picture, the graphic's all about. It's a couple people sitting on the dock talking about the things of God and things God's called us to, and then helping inspire others to go with us out there, past the past, beyond the lighthouse, knowing that the lighthouse will bring us home when need be. So we're going to get some good conversation today. we got some deep talk, got some great guests in for you. Just a couple of housekeeping things. Just a reminder, YouTube is our main platform. Join us on YouTube. That's our main video platform. We're also with iTunes, Spotify, and we've got these other platform partners, Google Podcasts, Facebook, Roku. Go to Roku, download the SermonNet app, and find On the Dock with Pastor Troy. You can find us on Rumble as well, SermonNet, and also our social media partners are Facebook, Telegram, Instagram, and Twitter. Check it out there. Shout, give us a shout out, comments, those kind of things as well. And you can always, please, when you get to those sites, subscribe, like, hit, notify, uh, send comments, whatever, but we want to make sure that you're make, being a part of the show there. So do that as well. And just by the way, you can go to Patreon, go to the Patreon app, download and look for the On the Dock with Pastor Troy. We're a Patreon partner and you can become a partner or sponsor of our show. We'd love to have you do that. And if you can't find it that way, you can go to onthedock.org and you can find all of the links to all of our platforms. You can, you can view it in the in-browser viewer as well, and you can also email us anytime for any questions at info at onthedoc.org. You'll get a hold of Donna Kronuski. She's our executive producer. In here with us today is Lucas Winkler, executive director on the cameras, and we've got a great crew for you, and we're getting ready to rock and roll. So we're going to... Uh, we're. I don't really have a co-host today, so I've got what I've got here. Are people used to hosting their own show, so we don't really need a co-host today. But I'm excited about our team. We've got Swinford Media here, and I've nicknamed it the Swinford Media Empire, and I love it. I love it. It's incredible. This is like this is the good empire. Swinford Media Empire is here today. We're going to be in part one. It's going to be a three-part series. Check it out. It's going to be incredible. You do not want to miss it. Around the table and around the horn here, I've got three incredible people. First is Bill Swinford. He is the publisher. Bill, publisher, publisher, publisher in chief. I like, I want you to add chief in that. Okay. Publisher and chief. And we've got him at the table. We've got Riley Swinford, editor and general manager, correct? That's right. Got got you right. And Rachel, you work with the Swinford Media Group and one of their anchors. I most certainly am. Oh my goodness. And and she, if you don't know this, she's most famous for being my co-host on Family Fun Day. Virtual Family Fun Day. I mean, it's like that's as close to the Emmys or Oscars as, as I've ever gotten, and uh, except for she's way too tall for me. So this year, they're getting me a stool for this year's <laughs> September 12th Family Fun Day so I can meet up. Rachel, uh, Bill, Bill's husband to Kim Swinford, father of four, Bill. You got four kids? Four kids between uh, the ages of 29 and now 13 so we spread them out a little bit it was a little less scary that way and bill bill goes back you guys have had shane bishop on here already we've had uh, you had my friend roger light but literally uh god bill goes back to my very first ministry days as youth pastors we were youth pastors he was first christian church i was at heron methodist and we caused a lot of trouble in this city (laughs) and uh, i had to leave the city for 20 years bill was able to stay around so, you know, that, that's how it goes, but he's still here. We've been friends for a long, long time. We have done a lot of crazy things. Yeah, Troy took the rap for everything we did, and he had to leave. I leave. I, I do the short stick, you know, rock, paper, scissors, and I had to be out of town. <laughs> Riley's the editor and general manager of Swinford Media. R- Riley, what, what do you do over there? Um, a little bit of everything. Um, pretty much uh, three newspapers, um, social media, <laughs> Uh, live streaming, broadcasting. Um, we keep all of Williamson County informed is what we try to do. And why, when you say that, I say Swinford Media Empire. <laughs> That's what I do. Rachel, Rachel, give me a feel of what you're doing with Swinford Media Group and, and what you're doing as an anchor and hosting shows and stuff. What isn't she doing? What isn't she doing? <laughs> well, on my normal office days, while I'm at my desk, I'm creating a lot of uh, content to go in the papers, a lot of graphic design and marketing, <laughs> advertising pieces um, that get published in print every week and then we do obviously a lot of video work so I'm most of the time on camera sometimes I'm behind it doing interviews and filming and editing those packages back together to go into our shows man that's fantastic all right fantastic make sure you put on those credentials now family fun day co-host virtual (laughs) this will be year two next year we'll be two years we'll be like man 
All right, we're going to get into this. We've got an incredible show for you. We're going to get started, find out about the Swinfield Media Empire. Why would we talk about that? On the Dock is about sitting on the dock with, with people that are of faith, people of core faith, and talking about the things of God and, and how God's propelled you guys out into this, this, this whole venture. And also to kind of, what we're doing is acting as coaches. There's going to be other people that want to be an anchor. They want to be an, an, an editor. They want to be a publisher. They want to do things. And, and what we want to do is be a resource for believers, Christians that are looking to get out of the shallows and into the deep. So that's kind of our, our goals here. And uh, so we're going to try to get in some prescriptions, but we want to find out a little bit. Bill, tell us a little bit about how you got started in this background of being a publisher. When I left town, well, you, you, were, you were a youth pastor, so I don't know what happened. Well, be- before I was a youth pastor, I, I uh, started out as a reporter at, at Heron's hometown paper at that time called The Spokesman and worked with John Homan, who's a guy who's still getting it done and and uh still a, still a man from heron that i appreciate and enjoy working with still a little bit today but john and i in the late 80s were pretty much holding it down at the spokesman and and from the very beginning you know i, I got into journalism as kind of like you know the, the way a kid does when he comes out of high school not knowing what he wants to do and he says well you know i can write so i think i'll try this journalism thing i didn't have any great motivation or dream of being a journalist but uh went through that and and uh went through school and and got into doing it a little bit enjoyed it to a certain extent but didn't find it to be quite as fulfilling as i might might hope it to be um i had had a a a time in my life as a young man that i wanted to go into youth ministry and it just happened that at our church that we had an opening um at at the church after uh kind of a tough time with some previous uh, with a p- previous youth pastor and and they asked Kim and I who had been working with youth there to, to come on staff and and do that you know obviously found found instant fulfillment in, in working with with young people and and doing that kind of work did that off and on really for uh, I mean off and on for for a good 15 15 years um, but some of the some of the offs saw me falling back into my you know into my major into my into uh into journalism took a couple of jobs in the newspaper business over the years ended up at the marion daily republican uh 20 years ago eventually became editor there and uh again anytime i wasn't doing youth ministry alongside i i was struggling with you know what am i doing with my life i just couldn't find the attachment in the on the journalism side that that i needed to um to feel fulfilled at what I was doing. Uh, ended up going in more into children's ministry, the Aldersgate Methodist Church, a church we still attend in Marion, and uh, did that for for a little time. But again, just uh, looking for just the right, right, you know, connection between my talents and abilities, which I always had on the journalism side, and finding, you know, finding purpose. Um, one of the things that brings purpose into any job is, is when you have a family member, such as your son, decide he wants to come alongside and do That's it. That's great. And, yeah. and Riley will tell you that he's loved it from day one, from when he started delivering papers till now. He's, he's loved it. And so that automatically makes you, makes you love it a little bit more, especially when he wants to work with you. And so That's great. we eventually got into, just to make a long story short, we eventually got into our own business, into our own, own uh, newspaper, uh, creating our own Marion newspaper, alongside a couple of other existing papers in Heron and Carterville that uh, we worked with together and have worked together now for several years. And, and uh, um, I just, just from the years of experience in the business, I think I took the title of publisher just because maybe I knew a little bit more about the business side. Riley's a very talented editor. And, um, and so it, it works out pretty well. That's excellent. Fantastic. I, tell me a little bit about, about the different, maybe Riley, tell, tell me a little bit about the components. You guys, this is not a, this is not the old school, just, you know, call the paper, put it into print. You, you guys have a multifaceted media approach. Yeah. So, I mean, like I'm 29 years old and, you know, I'm, I'm realistic enough, Troy, to know that the black and white newspaper pages might not make it to the end of my career, you know, yeah, in 30 right. or 40 years. So we're trying to evolve. We're trying to grow. We're trying to do some things to reinvent the business a little bit and uh, trying to take some things you see in maybe bigger markets and bigger areas and, and bring them right here to our hometown and, uh, you know, tell news in a more exciting, more uh, dynamic way than was already being told here. And it's kind of taken off and gotten really popular and we've had a lot of good feedback. So we're just continuing to, 
you know, we're not abandoning, you know, the, the old newspaper mm-hmm. stuff because there is still a, a place and a niche for that with a certain audience. But um, for people my age and younger, that's not how they get their information anymore. It's all, all digital through the phone, through social media. And so we know if I'm going to make this thing work for the next, you know, 30 years of my career, we're going to have to continue to evolve as, as time goes on. So we're adding, um, you know, we're big on, on social media. We do a digital newscast on there called the Marion Star Live every Sunday night. And uh, that's kind of supplementing our paper products, which are just weekly. That allows us to have another time to bring the news to our to our people. And uh, we also have um, daily posts and, and things like that that keep our readers informed um, outside of the one time a week that they, they get their hard copies. So, uh, you know, we're trying to be a 24-7 news organization and not just a, a once-a-week black-and-white print newspaper. Well, first of all, I, I look at the hard copy every week. I get it on my desk. And I look at it every week. I am appreciative of it because I use it also for our annual shrimp boil. <laughs> you know, I save them up, we stack them up, and then we have our fall mm-hmm. kickoff here. We put them under the cra- crawfish and the shrimp. Hey, they work really good for that. Yeah. But no, I do. But I have to tell you, I, I do my I, I do my morning devotion every morning. Then I go sit down on my computer, and almost the very first thing I click into this morning was 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 your report that goes out in the morning. Your email blast that goes out first of all I look to see if I'm in it did I die <laughs> you know if I'm there I'm in trouble am I in a good way or a bad way did I get arrested you know, you know as a pastor you always want to see you in trouble I don't believe I am but I, I really get there and look at that I really love having that available every morning and start the day off with that I like the Thursday paper I loved I love getting that and getting involved and seeing what all's going on but I, I, I like the multi-contact approach you know I know Beth and I talk about the morning blast almost every morning I walk back in and have coffee about 10 o'clock and tell her what I saw and then she catches on it and when the star co- live comes out I always click on that no matter where I am I watch that on my phone or whatever so I love the fact that you you've almost got media like it's almost like in a backpack ready to go wherever you are right. whether you're at home or take the paper with you whatever i love it and i'm able to share stuff and so it's really good riley uh riley tell me real quick it's editor and 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 publisher uh, for the publishing role I understand editor manager did you really want to do it did you or did, to be honest did you get drug into it I it didn't mean, sound like it but i i, I guess if you want to say i got drug into it it was when i was five years old um <laughs> when when like dad was saying that you know he's been in and out of this business for the last 25 to 30 years I mean that's been my life so yeah. when I wasn't at youth group or, or church uh, camp or, or things like that with his other job I was in newsrooms and yeah. and spending time around that business and you know I, I caught the bug of being in the news business and I used to sit when dad was you know at the West Frankfurt Daily American 20 years ago and produce my own you know six-year-old newspaper um, you know, alongside dad so that's I, for pretty much my whole life been pretty much my career path and then um coming out of college I went to SIU graduated in 2014 with a journalism degree and I had seen you know he'd worked with corporate newspapers and he did some time uh, with the local ABC affiliate here on the the news side and uh decided I didn't want to do the corporate thing I didn't want to work for someone else and that summer a month after I graduated when I went to him and said hey let's just start our own thing let's let's just do it ourselves and you know, I kind of have the mentality that, you know, it's probably sounds bad, but no one can do it as well as we can. That's, and, I love that. No, I love. I I, I, I absolutely totally agree. And so, I think you uh, guys have brought back the, the local town paper. Yeah. You have not just brought it back, but you've brought it back in a way that'll stand time a little bit. Well, and I'll tell you the other thing that that's evident of is 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 the value of generations working together. Because right. you know, I had some experience. I'd I'd been around, you know, the block a few times with it seen what worked, what didn't work, had a real feel for what, you know, small town journalism could be and, and should be. Riley came along with that youthful arrogance that he just displayed yeah. and, and, uh, and, and that drive that, you know, a guy that's in his middle age needs a little bit of that Man, yeah. to get you going. And, and, you know, you get a young buck and it makes the old bucks have to sharpen up a bit. You that's know? exactly right. You get gored to death. Mm. If you don't. <laughs> I mean, I think it's, I, I just, I just think it's absolutely a, just cool what you're doing and Thanks. and the call God's put on your life and, and what God's doing with you guys in our committee. Let, let me get to Rachel. Ra- Ra- Rachel, how, how did you get into this group? Number one, I, I understand why you're needed. Somebody, hang on, I got, I got to go back to him one question. What is it like as the editor? Kim writes a piece that's in all your papers. Right. Do you take the red pen to your mom? <laughs> Do you wear out your mom's stuff and send it back to you? Do you go, no, mom, you can't say this, and you correct her comma splices, or is she a pretty good writer? 
I mean, I, I have to edit everyone that's in our in our papers a little bit, but uh, when it's when it's family, yeah, it can get a little bit more personal, I guess, sometimes <laughs> between us. But uh, no, it it really takes an army. Kim also does. My mom does uh, circulation. She helps deliver in the newspapers, uh, answers the phone. It, it really. Is I just wonder thing. when you edit your mom if you just got in trouble or you got a note because <laughs> I got through seminary because my wife edited my seminary papers. Every now and then I had to fight with her about what she would correct and stuff. <laughs> You've missed the whole point, you know. And she said, "Well, you got to run on." And it says four paragraphs. So, you know, I'm, I, I talk like that. I write like that. So early, that's how early on, you know, when she's been doing this a long time, she back when I started at the spokesman 30 plus years ago, she was writing a column. And so I was her, you know, editor at that time. Golly. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a scary proposition. Yeah, that, I, I, you know, I, I found my place <laughs> real quick, knew, knew what I could get away with, knew get what, what you I couldn't, couldn't. And, and, uh, ultimately uh, the more Kim they see and the less of me or Riley in it, the, the, the more popular her columns are. And in a minute, we're going to show the inst- the end credit from one of the Marion star lives. I, you got other siblings that are in oh, this. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, everyone with the last name Swinford has some role. I like it. It's like pastor's families. <laughs> all our kids fold a bulletin. They've all had to be involved. They exactly. have to do stuff. Megan paints the set for Christ event. Our family's always had to be a, a missionary family. This sounds like a mission yeah. Mary family. And then you got Rachel, who's the most Swinford, non Swinford you'll ever find. So. Have you drafted her in? Is she officially a Swinford? She gets mistaken She's, for a Swinford. She does. Yeah. Bless, her, bless her heart. Well, yeah. And the thing is, yeah, I, I can see that. I can really, I, I, I think Ur is one of y'all's. So that's great. Okay, Rachel, I'm back to you. I'm sorry. I just had to find out how he deals with his mom. It's a good question. It's a great question. And how did you find your way into this group? What's the role of anchoring? How did you, how did you decide to do that? I mean, who grows up? Are you from this area? I'm from Marion, born and raised. Well, who would aspire to be an anchor in Marion? I mean, I mean, it's, I it's mean. not what I set out to do. Oh, good. <laughs> I was wondering. Well, back in the day, Bill was the children's minister at my church oh. and needed some help uh, child wrangling and asked me to help out. So Riley and I worked together even as high school students, uh, right. babysitting all the kids in our children's ministry and helping with VBS and all of the things and Uh, We worked together well back in the day, and I got a call almost two and a half years ago now um, about, from Kim, saying that they were looking to add um, another member to the team and asked if I wanted to meet up and grab coffee. Several hours later, um, here we are. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you're I, what reason I'm saying for Marion because you're very good at. It. I mean, I I, I watch you. I, I've worked with you. you. I've come in and been interviewed by you, and then you and I just basically walked on a platform and did a four and a, four I mean, hour telephone. It was pretty much by accident, Troy. Uh, Rachel originally got <laughs> hired to sell advertising for us, and then one, well, I one, one day we were working on video projects and. Uh, we were like, Rachel, how about you give it a try? How about you hop in front of that camera? And then she was just such a natural at it and did such a great job. That uh, look on the screen. I got, I got you guys working together okay. recently. We'll talk about that in the next episode. But I mean, you guys are natural. Who, who, who's the new reporter in the bottom right? Well, that's Victoria. Victoria, I see her on yeah. quite a bit now. She's doing a great job yeah, too. Victoria Shore is is going to the University of Missouri Columbia, the top wow. journalism school in the Midwest, if not the country, and and. Uh, She's just graduated from from high school. She actually worked with us last year. She helped us on Family Fun Day do the restaurant reports, didn't she? She did. And she was Miss Illinois Outstanding Teen this past year. Oh, really? Will she be back for Family Fun Day? Can we use her Family Fun Day this year? I think she'll probably be be in in Missouri by that time. Oh, man. She may, it turns out she may run, you know, she may run. I don't know. She may uh, compete compete for Miss Missouri. uh, Are you kidding me? Oh, my goodness. She's she's terrific. Well, I'm for her. There's just a lot of natural talent that uh, we've been able to find, and, and Rachel's just an example of that. I mean, we knew Rachel had an important role with the Southern Illinois Miners. We knew that she had a presence about her. We knew that she had, uh, you know, a, ability, and we've always respected her and who she is to her core. And so we knew that she would, she and her her positive positivity would add so much to our team, no matter what she ended up doing. We just ended up finding this perfect. Uh, perfect thing for her to do for us, and and wow. then there's a million other things she does just just as well. The, her ability. What's cool about it is you have people. I, I did some of this when I was in college as well. You have people when you do your college production TV studio stuff. You have people who can do the teleprompters. I mean, they can stand and look and read. But you you don't use a lot. We're not using a lot of teleprompters here. You didn't. We didn't a lot for that. We maybe some cheat sheets here and there. Right. But but what you have the ability to do is to think on your feet very fast. Yeah, I can I can give her a script with one word and she'll take it from there and build from that. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. My problem is I can do the same thing, but if I don't get it in the first time, I'm doomed. <laughs> it's just like I, I'm a one time wonder if I if I skip then my 
it kind of my mind overlays. I'm like an old vinyl record album. Once you lay it down, it's laid down. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, you just do a fabulous job because we did Thank that you. whole family fun day just flying by the seat of our pants. And I <laughs> thought it would blow you up. It didn't blow you up at all. I had to try to catch up with her <laughs> at all because we were juggling multiple inbound objects, you know. So that's really, that's, that's just a gift to be able well, to do that, you. to process, to think, to, to, to be ready with your next question. And I think th that's old school reporting being done in a new way. Sure. You're not just doing it in a paper fresh or on a blog fresh like you do. You're able to do it live that way or in a report piece that you're going to bring in later. It's just really amazing. Well, thank you. I work with the best team. You do. You got a great, you, you, you've got a, you got, world. you've got a great bunch here. Hey, I'm going to show a, a real quick clip here for a second. And that's going to lead us into our big question for the day. Let me bring that question up. Let me, this is from their Marion star live. And if you're watching on Spotify or iTunes or Google podcasts, you're not going to be able to see this. It's got some music on it. Just enjoy it for a few minutes but i want to encourage you to get on youtube or our facebook or our sermon net link and check this out because it really kind of shows what they're doing or even better go watch marion star live and see the credit for yourself but give you a feel of the aspects of what they're doing in their business so check this out for one second we'll look at this for two minutes to seven seconds i'm gonna leave my mic hot and i'll give a little bit of feel uh maybe a couple a little bit of commentary for those of you on itunes or spotify <music> Brother Ross. Sam, another brother? Young, younger brother? Young. Yeah. Yep. Hauling gear? That's Victoria. We just recently lost Ron. Ron, Ron just, passed away? Ron just passed away, yeah. Oh, last man, week. he's done great work. Sophia Swinford. You got everybody involved. That's an engaged family. I love it. I love it. I love it. Bill himself. Lots of coffee in this business, that's for sure. Sharif, who you just saw, he's kind of another brother. He's uh, he's from Mali, Africa. He's actually playing with them in the Olympic qualifiers right now. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he's playing basketball over in Spain, uh, trying to qualify for the Olympics. That is absolutely incre incredible, man. I, guys, that's just a good look at what you guys are doing. And let me let me get into the heart of the question. This episode, specifically this episode, the, the, the main thesis is running a regional media empire and running it from a Christian perspective. It's one thing to run it, run the news, and, and, and to be the news. It's another thing to do it while you, you're, you're willing to sit here and proudly say, hey, I, I, I serve the Lord, I'm a Christian, um, and, and to produce from that mindset, to deal with people that are gnarly and nasty, the good, the bad, the ugly out there. Just tell me, how do you, from a Christian perspective, deal with the issues today with me? Because the media is just, I mean, the media is probably thought less of today than almost than the politicians today. And I don't hear anybody saying that about Swinford Media Group. Nobody says that. I mean, it's not thought of here. Uh, it's not. You guys You guys are known people. You've been around here. You're part of the community. Uh, I, when I moved back here, uh, you know, I moved back to this region 10, 11 years ago. I mean, I kind of caught up with Bill doing this and stuff, and I knew he had a love for this. But 
I, I just never heard anything. I'm not saying you ain't made anybody mad. I'm just saying I just never heard anybody say one bad thing about what you publish, what you write, what you do, your motivation for doing it, the purpose for doing it, how you lead the community. How have you done that in the middle of what's going on with our media today? Our media is so polarized, left-wing media, right-wing media. Most media is trying to tell you what to think, so trying to tell you where to, how to become an activist. You guys have, have created a whole different way of doing this. So I just want to hear from each of us. Start with Bill and just tell me how from the – the truth, ethics, morals, dealing with public, the good, the bad, and the ugly. How have you maintained your Christian faith? And not only that, you become a, a go-to place for, for, for this community. Well, you know, to be in business in any, in, of any kind, you need to have, you need to have integrity, uh, I believe, in order to truly be successful, to be life, you know, to be long time successful, to be truly That's successful. Integrity is important. Integrity is so important in the news business because you can lose your credibility pretty, pretty easily. We, um, first of all, you know, when it comes to what we have in our pages, take our, take our op-ed page, for instance. I've always had an opinion that everybody, everybody, you know, can have a voice. Everybody, we need to hear from, from every side. Um, so we try to keep our, our opinions and their balance. You know, of course, we try to make it clear that these opinions aren't necessarily ours, but right. we're not afraid. We're not afraid of, of hard opinions coming from either direction. And, and there are occasion when we'll be called out for some opinion that somebody else put in there. And we just have to make it clear that, you know, these people are, are entitled to their opinion as well. And we're, you know, we decide as a, as a platform to allow that to come up. Because one of the things we feel strongly about, and we've kind of gone through that here recently, especially in Marion, where, there has been some controversy through the school district and some people were, you know, trying to shout down other people. And, and uh, a lot of that these days happening on social media where you're not allowed to, you know, not allowed to have a voice without somebody shouting you down. And we, we try to offer a platform where these discussions can happen, but in a, um, in a, in a, in a way that, that uh, something gets accomplished and, and bring, the, bring certain voices in from both sides and, and, and have those conversations. It's, it's important to us that, obviously, with me having a ministry background, with being active in our church, with, with having written opinion pieces that profess my faith, my wife professing her faith, uh, it's important to me that, that you know, we try to, try to live what we're talking about. And... Um, and so when we go through our daily lives, we make mistakes like anybody, anybody sure else, but we don't try to pretend we're anything that we're not. But at the same time, we, we try to represent ourselves in a way that gives glory to God and that honors him. And we try to find people, you know, to work with us that, that do the same thing. And we've been very blessed that way. We really believe that Rachel and others have been brought to our, our door by, by God, that, you know, we may have been able to talk Rachel into coming in the door the first time, but it's because of God that we've been able to keep her. She could go a lot of places and do a lot of mm -hmm. things, and she may yeah. still. And God bless her, she does. But as long as it's up to God and Rachel, we want to hang on to her because of the way that she represents him and, and represents us. Uh, so really we, we, we believe strongly that, that uh, uh, we need to have integrity in, in what we're doing. That's well, really to, good. To Go kind of build off of that, um, you know, one thing when we were, we founded the Marion Star from scratch. Um, the Carterville Courier and Heron Independent were two existing publications when we came on um, with our old business partner. He already had, had owned those two. But when we started the Marion Star from scratch, one of the reasons we chose the name Star over the Marion Times or the Marion Gazette or, you know, some old newspaper phrase was because, you know, like a star shining light on, on certain things. And we've always tried to, you know, take the last year, for example, with, with COVID and the pandemic and all of the racial injustice and everything that's been going on in our world the past year that news media nationwide and worldwide have had to report on, we try to look for the good in every situation. And one thing that, you know, we did during the pandemic, um, for example, is, you know, we got with, with Pastor Troy and, and the House of Hope and what you guys were doing with the meals program. And we tried to, yeah, we'll report, you know, the stats, we'll report the figures, you know, with COVID, for example, we'll tell you how many people are sick, how many people are, are dying and things like that. But we don't want to dwell on the negative and, and all the bad that you can find on any website, any social media page in the world. We want to bring to the forefront that people are doing something good during those yeah, times. I, let me say something back about that, because I know I, I, I got interviewed by the other major Southern Illinois empire. And I appreciate that. I appreciate they interview us. They, 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 they give a snippet of the story. 
but they would show up occasionally, about once a month when they were needing something. And the media, and and the, and the TV media did too. They were pretty good to show up occasionally, especially early on. But you guys published our stuff. I mean, I, I send it to you. You publish it really nicely. I appreciate that. And well, let me just tell you what it means to us. The House of Hope went into – I'm – I found it. I was part of the three pastors that visioned it. I was there for all this. I mean, all of it. And when we went into COVID in February, March, we had $18,000. We had probably just enough to squeak us into the summer, get to the children's meeting program, and get us to Family Fun Day when we refill our tanks. We have monthly giving through the churches. So between those two, we would get we would get to September. But we were going to slide into September. It was going to be tough, and because we had things to repair, we had air conditioners to repair. And I, I got to be careful of this because I, I don't want I don't want people in this community to quit doing what they're doing or their heads to get too big. But when you guys came beside us and began to put the information out of what we were serving, what we were doing, what was going on, the amount of money that came in from people in the community when they read your stuff, the people that would bring in stuff, food, money, people that offered to come volunteer. It's embarrassing to say our bank account's so much better than it was when we started this. It really is. Before we got to Family Fun Day, we were sitting on more money than we knew what to really do with, honestly, at the time. And because of you guys' work of putting out the good, more money came in. Great. More money came in. We 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 were feeding, instead of feeding 170 in the kitchen, we're feeding 400. We had people donating equipment, offering to buy new ovens, new stoves, this and that. There, there's not... We've got those resources in there now to feed 500 and to store the food for 500 and updated the roof and updated the air conditioning, put new fryers in and put this in. Thousands of dollars came in because you guys chose to do the good side of it. You chose to put out information that empowered our local people to be a part of something that was special in our community. So yeah, you're a catalyst for that. You know, we're always, we're always honored and, and humbled to find out that we played a role in any of, any of that kind of thing. When, you, know, you, you mentioned our email updates. Our e- email updates actually mentions a little bit of a mission statement. That you know, that mission statement is, is two things. One, we want to bring news of impact. Okay, not necessarily every last CD story that you can probably find anywhere else on Facebook or or online. As Riley mentioned, you can find a lot of these things. News of impact that that's going to impact our readers, but also we want to be able to lift up those things that are that are going to improve the quality of life yeah. of the people around us and and. And sometimes that means we're promoting things and not asking for a dollar for it. Sometimes, right. sometimes we're partnering with either churches or businesses that are able to to work with us together and make it all work together. And and um, anytime that happens, we're we're really honored. And I want to make sure Rachel, we hear from Rachel on. Yeah, this absolutely, episode. Rachel. Rachel give, give us your impact on on just being a Christian and the role you're in. There are a lot of people looking to you. And, 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 and you've got peers out there that you work in the same media. How do you take this on? Because I just see you have somebody of incredible character. You work oh, in a you. team. Yeah. Well, on a very personal level, I, and very biblically too, the Bible talks a lot about um, how much power our words carry with them. And um, our words have the power to bring life, or they have the power to bring death. And like we're choosing that every time we open up our mouths, what we're going to be spreading, what we're going to be speaking into existence. And um, I coach volleyball and cheerleading at Agape, and that's something that I talk to my girls all the time about is like you've got the power. Like are we speaking good things over our friends? Are we speaking good things over ourselves? Are we speaking good things over our community? What are we choosing to accept into our lives and what are we saying? No, we're better than that. We can do better than that. We are going to be better. We're going to bring more. We're going to, um, we're going to start living our lives as Christ has called us to live them. And I think my, well, I don't think I know my favorite part about my job is getting to shine a bright light on great people doing great things and helping to tell their story and, um, hopefully connecting other people who might be of similar mindset or who are thinking about doing something. And they're like, Oh, well that person did that. I can do that too. Let me turn around and impact my community and cause change. And it's just a lovely ripple effect. Well, I, I, I may just come back and say, I, I know what you do with Mary United. My son's Josh, they crown brew team there. Phenomenal. What you guys came along with them and did Mary United. That was in the middle of COVID as well. Mm-hmm. And then to come and do family fun day with us was a complete virtual event. We, 
I, I, I want to push this because we went from 34,000 to serving almost 90,000 meals last year. That's three years of meals we served in one year. We had almost no money to do it. We had probably 100,000 plus in the account by the end of the year. I mean, seriously, and, and made improvements and are doing well still. We had almost all of our churches offline. Uh, we, COF was able to stay online. A few churches were able to send a few people in. But mo- almost all of our mission giving stopped. So had we not been able to get right to the people of this community, right to the business owners, we would have died on the vine and we didn't die on the vine. We, fl- it was like miracle grow by God, you know, it, cause we were able to put, and then when we did family fun day, we normally make about $34,000. That's a big deal for us. We made 72, five, almost 73,000 last year on a virtual event for the first time thrown together on a short notice. And I just want to tell you, I just appreciate what you guys bring to the table. Not just that you report the news, but you're here for your community and, and, and it's a part of who you guys are. So it, it just, it's expressed in everything you guys do. Thank Thank you. you. It really is. We're going to get much deeper with these guys, much deeper in the next round. I just want to get you introduced to them today. But let me just tell you a few pieces of news here. Uh, Marion Star, the Independent, the Swinford Media Group, the Courier, all this, and Marion Star Live, they've got all kinds. What are those other things you got going on there? I don't have my glasses on. I can't hardly read the bottom there. You're doing doing the the games as well? Yeah, a lot of live casting of Marion High School sports. Uh, That's become a very popular thing that we're involved in. The Turning Back Time, those episodes on YouTube. YouTube yeah. that I see, those are great. Yeah. Those are Hist- fa- a lot of history things. People, so you can find out why those. Ray Fossey Park is Ray Fossey Park. Exactly. I love that piece. Yeah. I never knew that. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. So check this out. They've got their we got their mail, their office information up there. It's Post Office Box Ten, Marion, Illinois. Office is at twelve oh five Town tw- Town Square Plaza. They're in the Marion Square Plaza where the big tower is. They're in that. When you come in there, you're on the what side is that? Would that be the northeast northeast side in the corner there, next to the pizza place to the right? They got a great facility there, just up the alley from Oak Crown Brew, one of our favorite. <laughs> partners they've got a phone number at 618-997 star 618-997 star at 7827 and you can email riley swinford send him the email riley swinford at gmail.com send him those articles send him information tell him you want to buy some ads we want to support them well promote your business it does very well you can check out swinfordpublications.com they've also got a facebook presence for at the marion star at the independent at the courier newspaper at the Heron Independent, all, all four of those uh, papers. And you can also check them out on Instagram at the Marion Star Live and at Swinford Publication. Uh, I think those are, there's some blogs and stuff you can get involved. We want you to subscribe to their papers. They've got some great packages for that. Go to SwinfordPublications.com. Check out that package. Now, it, it comes with the papers, but it also comes with the daily blogs that you send out. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. What, what, what do you call the daily blogs? I open them every day. Yeah, well, it, it's, a, it's, it's called the email update. It's, the it's, email it's very, update. Very, I, I worked hard on that one. <laughs> Who writes it? Uh, I primarily me. I uh, thought it was you. I'm the, I'm the early, You're the early bird. I'm the early morning. Yeah, guy. it's it's in there very early in the morning. I kind of had a feeling it was you. I, usually this time of day, I'm shutting it down. Yeah, but I'm, me, I'm here for you. Yeah, me, yeah, yeah. Me too. I'll, I'll forward him an idea or two. Yeah, yeah, you give him one or two ideas and, and then tell him to, to go for it. And anytime yeah. we put a picture of Rachel in there, it's very popular. So, so Bill Riley, Rachel, thank you very much. We'll get into. T- part two here in just a minute. Well, we're going to continue and come back and check us out in part two of the next podcast is we're going to talk about Swinford Media again. We're going to talk about news yesterday, news today, and news tomorrow. So check that out. Come back and join us. You can find out more about On the Dock at onthedock.org. You can email us at info at onthedock.org as well. And you can view us on our main platform, YouTube for video, iTunes, Spotify for our audio, as well as Google Podcasts. We also use Facebook, Roku, Rumble, SermonNet, and you can get with us on social media we'd love to chat with you facebook instagram telegram and twitter we have a presence there make sure when you get those places you subscribe share those with other people hit the likes the comments make sure if you hit notification it'll let you know when we go live and you can always become a partner or a sponsor at on the dock go to patreon become a partner or find out how to be a sponsor of an episode or a show or more we got more details there as well and if you don't have a church to go to you guys go to church you go to marion aldersgate that's that's yeah i think we're, we're all all, all, all of you go to, tell, tell us people. when marion aldersgate meets we'd love to well, we've got an 8.30 and a 10.30. 8.30 and 10.30, Marion Aldersgate. You can also, if you don't have a church home, you can check out Marion Aldersgate, 8.30 and 10.30, or you can come out to Community Faith Church. That's a host church for this podcast site, and we meet on Sundays at 10, Wednesdays at 6.30. We have a presence, a virtual campus at coftv.com, also on Facebook and YouTube. Check that out as well. We'd love to have you, and, and thanks for joining us at On The Dock. We'll be back in podcast number two, and we look forward to seeing you soon. And you're on the dock with Pastor Troy. Have a good day.